Welcome to all the subjects of this 15 minutes uh, keynote. I will leave a little bit room for questions and afterwards, of course, I will be able for, uh, available for questions is how to um, make alliances between emerging ideas, emerging uh, initiatives, new alternative ways to deal with, um, with problems in society, like it's full of them here how to make alliances, systemic alliances, with uh, big companies. It's a big challenge because if we have five or ten years, we know we have five or ten years to deal with the big challenges we are heading, how uh, can we leverage them? It's not enough. Startups, it's nice, but it's not enough. We will not be able to scale it up so that the population, the whole population, will be able to benefit from the, the new, the, our, our new ideas. So how can we make intelligent alliances between small emerging new ideas and big companies? This is the case. We are now, um, as um, entrepreneurs, um, uh, experimenting it. So our work is visionary, visionary work on new economy models. Uh, we are the inventors of the systemic economy template. And uh, the thing is, it is described in, in our book here, it, which is for sale in the library. Um, and we also work in, in value management, is detecting ex, um, unique value of companies, small ones, medium ones, big ones, and leverage them. And also we are entrepreneurs, so we are uh, creating new companies together with our clients. So we, we, some, some of them I will explain you. So now... Ah. Ah, voilà. Okay, so we, we definitely know things are never going to be the same as before and there are several shocks coming uh, to us uh, globally that will oblige us to work differently and the previous session is, is also explaining how we can make the change from the inside but maybe it's not fast enough, maybe we should find other ways to deal with that. Okay, the systemic challenges which are heading to us, we um, have made an inventory of approximately 20 big challenges. Uh, I'm not going to list them, you know them better than I do. The weakness of the economy, the climate change, demography, etc. So we know that we will not be able to give linear solutions to the systemic challenges. We have to give systemic solutions. Systemic solutions mean connected solutions. That means that we have to connect this world with the mainstream world. The question is how to do this. And it's very difficult. It's, it's a big challenge to, to make these alliances, but we have to do them. So there are three keys to, um, to succeed that. The first key of systemic economy that we uh, discovered is that um, the best drive, the best way to motivate people, whether it's alternative world, emerging world like this, and mainstream corporations, is contribute to common good. In one or the other way, the intention of the company should contribute to common good. And the question is, how, uh, how do we calibrate that? To what do we contribute? The second thing is most of the value of your companies, the emerging world, and of the traditional uh, corporations are immaterial, intangible. It's human value. It's 87% now, standard poor 500 figures. 87% is immaterial. And if you can connect to this immaterial value, all of a sudden you can connect to common good and to other ways to create value. And then the, it's also scientifically proved that collaboration, of course, is much more efficient than working on, on our side. And collaboration means collaboration inside big companies, like the previous session, but also collaboration bet in between stakeholders. And if we can open up these big corporations to their ecosystems, which includes you, and make intelligent contracts and intelligent uh, collaboration contracts, all of a sudden we can work much more efficient and much more and create much more value. So this is where we have to plug into it. And, and, and we should not be afraid to swim as goldfish in between the sharks because they actually also want this efficiency. 
So this is what you can add value. But the, qu the question is, of course, again, how? It's these three keys, common good, intangible value mapping and creating, and collaboration is a triple grand écart. It's a, it's a spread. It's not, it's not easy to do. But it's uh, passage obligé. We have to go through that and to make our business case to the, the big companies to explain them that it's really the, the values of the next economy. And it's also a generation question. When you see the, the, the medium age here, it's younger than the medium age of the demography. So it's a question of generation. Now, how can create transition with impact? Um, it's by, again, bringing together resources. And this I will make go in detail. It's bringing resources of the emerging world, which is innovation with value, more value creation, more um, added value for people. It's entrepreneurial drive, like you find here, which is not so uh, present in big companies. And the third thing is leverage, volume. It's, uh, and this is that you can find to big corporations. So how to make it work? What are the conditions to make these alliances work? The first thing is uh, no judgments. We should not fight against big companies. We, can, we should go and see them and talk to them. There are wonderful people inside big companies. I think there are a lot of big corporations members here. I saw Castorama, I saw um, uh, Decathlon, I saw Danone. And these companies are also looking for new value. And this is a, a demand. So we can enter into this big companies through these doors, no judgment. Second thing is common values, find common values of trust, collaboration, serving common good. Then, this is very important that the new projects should be protected in quality space. And if you put them inside big companies, it's too dangerous, because the risk is that those new ideas are killed. Because they are too different, and they are too challenging. And this is, I will explain where. And, the, of course, the first thing is the methodology. We need a very strong and rigorous methodology so that the thing can emerge and be uh, watered and be nurtured till it's giving some fruit. And it really takes time. Six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months. You need really time and methodology. And uh, we, we presented the methodology in the book in 18 steps, of course, including uh, collaborative intelligence and all. It's part of it. And there are uh, several steps. The contracts. What kind of contracts do you make with the stakeholders? It's a, it's a very big challenge. 100% of the projects, emerging projects I have seen failed. And after that, uh, some of them survived. When you go to the market, because the contracts were not clear. What do I give as resource? What do I get out of the project? It's not clear. We should make a new kind of collaboration contract. And then, of course, the common goal and common intention. If the common goal and the common intention is uh, save your ass, then it's not going to work. If the common goal and common intention is serving common good and progress creates progress, then we can attach and the emerging uh, ideas and the big corporations to a common goal. So how can we merge both of them? We have uh, our algorithm, the 7D value, seven balance sheets. I will explain you. You have to cross the, the, the values and the resources of the individual emerging new ideas together with the resources of big corporations and cross them. And I will go through the seven levels now. First, we have to understand what are the weaknesses of the emerging world. The weaknesses, the negative side of the, no, no, revenir, oui. the liabilities is of of emerging uh, ideas is that the infrastructure is weak, low budgets, small money available, and um, quite alternative, so a little bit out of mainstream, and um, again, fighting against two big uh, issues. And the liabilities of the big companies, the weaknesses are that most of them are entering recession. It's very rigid, very um, working in silos, so not interconnected horizontally. And um, lack of purpose. People are, in those big companies, losing motivation. So now, this is the negative side. How can we cross the resources? The pos on the positive side, we have, of course, a very lean and agile entrepreneurship drive of this kind of world, alternative world, willing to contribute um, with new knowledge, 
new ways of working, um, community-based, very passionate, and low-cost, efficient. This is typically of the, the alternative world. And if we cross that with the resources of big companies, which is uh, cash flow, they have cash flow, they have a lot of clients, they have um, sometimes good brands, we have to use that, make intelligent use of brands, and they have, of course, a lot of knowledge about their business and distribution channels, okay? So now, when you see how it works, you start in the margin on the left, small initiative, and little by little it can, it can grow in the margin so that the new models can become bigger than the old models. We have seen this, for example, in the music industry, in the margin. Um, it was very, very small and marginal in the beginning, and now it took the whole market from the, the sales of CDs and DVDs, it's just mo most of it disappeared. Like Vivendi, Vivendi Universal Music, and now it's all on Spotify, and it, it can take the whole thing. But if you can work with it, pilot it, and structure it, it can be done intelligently with and much more faster, together with big companies. So there are a few tricks that we now understood of how to make your business case. When you go to a big company, a bank or an insurance company or a real estate a company or distribution company, what are the tricks to make them talk to you as an alternative small operation? The first thing is go and talk to them about their immaterial value. Look in their company, in their value, which are the most important um, knowledge issues and talk to them about money. That means that what is your co total value and what is your material value? Say that, connect to this intangible knowledge, networks, communication, passion that you can um, work with, use it. The second thing is challenge them on pragmatic questions. How are you going to do to have a business in five years, 10 years? Things are changing in your area. How are you going to, to surf on this big change in your own business? Challenge them pragmatically on how they are going to do it. Because most of the time they have no idea how to, how to, uh, to project them on 10 years horizon. Because there are too many things, it's too complex. And what you can bring is this lean, agile reactivity. Uh, and also uh, challenge them on methodology. They don't have a methodology of transformation. They are structured top down. And uh, militarily, they have no idea how to make it. And you have already lots of ingredients of the methodology of creating the transformation from the inside. So challenge them with that. And, and as managers, you can challenge them with that. And also connect them to, to the next generation. The Z generation, alpha generation, they ask something very, very different from the market, from operators, from banks, from insurance companies, from distribution. The Z and the alpha generation, under 23, 24, are really, it's their clients of tomorrow. Ask something different as uh, a company, as a client, as a supplier, but also as an employer. So make them connecting to, to their own children. What do your own children ask? So they are connected with actually what is the biggest change wave in history. And also, and this is very interesting, we realized most of these big companies have competition from new entrants, uh, new, comp new, com um, uh, new competitors, new entrants that are challenged, challenging them much cheaper, much more efficient. Ask them, who are you as a company going to be a new entrant from? It's very, very interesting. For example, I will give you a few examples now. Uh, okay, it's like what I see now from when I zoom back. So I've, I've been working in four continents in over 20 or 25 industries, different industries, and I see like the society changing, shifting. And I will give you a few examples that you will see that it's like osteopathy, that the, the backbone is, is coming in the right side, straight. And you will see very concretely how it is. For example, housing and real estate. A house today and tomorrow are going to be conceived, the conception of the house is going to be made that it does not, or does not use 
a lot of energy anymore. So the new entrance of the mazout, of the gas for heating, is not a new heating system. It's no heating. So the more you concept the house wisely, the less you have to use energy. So this is how housing becomes the new entrant of energy business. Next one. Uh, cars. What are the cars of tomorrow? Not electric cars. No car. Your car. Let's share cars. And the new entrant of the car industry is a communication application industry. Car sharing. You see? And it's much more smart because we will use less cars, more sustainable cars, and make less CO2 impact. This is smart. Another example. Health. What is the next health system? More pills? More uh, pharma? No. No pharma. <laughs> Prevention. Learn how uh, can I be less ill. This is the new entrant. It's education. Education is the new entrant of health industry. And it's scientifically proved very largely. So if you talk to an education industry or, or training industry, you can enter into this business of training prevention, uh, health prevention. It's a new business, emerging business. Another, uh, next one. Um, crowdfunding. Invest, investors are becoming entrepreneurs. It's very interesting. It shifts, so it takes away business from the banks. Another one? Um, again, uh, food is the new entrant of health. Healthy food makes people less ill. So the new entrant of health industry is eating correctly, correct and good food. And it's all shifting in the right direction. And when you see it from zoom back, you see really the whole thing is shifting like an osteopath is working on, on a body. And the body of the industry is, is going in the right way. So when you talk to a big company, ask them, who are, can you be the new entrant of to make it more sustainable, to make the whole system more sustainable and make in interesting, contributive business? Maybe another one, I don't know. Is there? Okay, uh, also education is challenged. Education is too expensive, it's too sectaire, it's too, um, you know, it's not available to everybody. The new entrant of, of business schools is online courses, is peer-to-peer -peer learning. And it's much cheaper, much quicker, and much more smart. L see how we can have a Harvard course or MIT course for, for $50. You see? It's much more smart, and it goes in the right direction. Another one? Okay. So now, these new projects, alliances, we need to make them work protected quality space. And protected quality space, you see them a little bit left and right emerging, co-working areas, fab labs, um, uh, uh, spin-off, joint ventures, cooperatives. You have to make places where it's protected over time. J'ai combien de temps encore? On a fini? Je termine, oui, voilà, c'est ça. So the bottom lines, okay, it's much more efficient use of resources to work like that. And it's connecting uh, generations in between, between themselves. Uh, it's it's um, including also external balance sheet, like common good, like earth balance sheet, and an event eventually is going to be able to lower the taxes. The risk is much lower if you make alliances with small operators and it's much cheaper for the business, for the corporation, and it's much faster for you guys if you make the deals with these big companies. And of course, on the long run, much in more interesting to, to get scale quicker, volume. Okay, I have lots of examples. Um, I think we shortened time. Okay, sorry. Um, come and see me if you want concrete examples, because really I have to, to cut it. If you're interested in the book, it's on the, in the bookshop. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle.